Hello everyone. In this video, uh, we'll be discussing break disc material. Uh, nowadays, student racing teams have started making their own break disc, and choosing the break disc material is uh, something that uh, is not very well described anywhere, and uh, <coughs> therefore teams have a lot of problems in uh, identifying the right break, the right material for their break disc. And uh, normally, we have also seen the teams end up with a lot of data which uh, you know which uh, actually tends to confuse them rather than clarifying the doubts that they have regarding the material okay so before moving into uh, the materials first let us discuss the brake rotor as uh, a system of uh, of the vehicle and what is what it actually does the image that we are seeing in front of us is actually a brake a therm the transient thermal analysis of a brake rotor on solid work simulation and uh, as you can see that uh, a circular ring a red circular ring is uh, formed on the brake rotor which actually shows the area that comes in direct contact with the brake pads so the maximum temperature this red region is the highest temperature region of the brake rotor so uh, all the heat is generated over here and then it flows to the other areas which are the colder regions of the brake disc. Now uh, what the brake disc has to do is it has to conduct all this heat um, you know uh, quite well and immediately to the entire brake rotor and then uh, since the brake rotor is exposed to air so all that heat has to uh, you know has to be transferred to air so that the brake rotor cools again and then can be utilized for further braking operations. The three very common materials that are used uh, for making brake disc is uh, are grey cast iron, steel and aluminum. Now grey cast iron um, is the most common material that you'll find. All the brake rotors the product, uh, of, the, of production cars are made using grey cast iron. Then you have steel which is also uh, quite common and uh, there are various grades of steel that are used for uh, making brake rotors and over here the properties that we are, we are discussing is of AISI 1020 and then comes aluminum similarly aluminum also has a lot of grades and uh, quite a few of them are used for brake rotors and the materials that uh, the properties that we are discussing over here are of aluminum 2024 now <coughs> we have to understand very clearly that how much strength does the brake disc require to actually handle all the load that is uh, that is that it should be capable of handling right so uh, many people get carried away a lot by yield strength yield strength is very important but a lot of yield strength will just uh, will, will not be necessary for an application like brake rotor okay so you have to analyze how much yield strength is required minimum yield strength that is required uh, uh, in the material to handle all the load that is going through the brake rotor. The brake rotor is not a component which is taking any kind of structural or uh, very heavy impact load or something like that. It is just handling your brake rotor. Sorry, it's just handling your braking torque. Right? So first of all, uh, the first property that you're seeing on screen is yield strength. And for grey cast iron, it varies from 98 to 280 megapascal. And generally, for brake rotors, we use this, uh, the the, <coughs> the the grade which has a yield strength of 280 megapascal. For steel, it's 350 megapascal. For aluminum, 2024, it's 758. Now, let us analyze uh, a brake rotor. Uh, let us con conduct a static analysis and see that how much strength we actually need. So here's a static analysis of the brake rotor. I have applied uh, the the braking force that is acting on uh, this brake disc and then I have constrained it uh, at the point where the brake pad grips the brake disc and as you can see the results that the yield strength is 248 megapascal I have used uh, a grade of grey cast iron over here so the yield strength as per solid works is 248 megapascal and the stress the maximum stress that I am uh, seeing over here is um, something around 10 megapascal right so obviously it is an extremely safe design so what I would like to point out over here is that 
if you have a material with a yield strength of 248 megapascal then it is more than sufficient you don't have to go for a very high grade uh, you know uh, aircraft quality aluminum uh, for this purpose because uh, uh, even a, a grey cast iron with 248 megapascal can serve the purpose now after discussing the yield the let us come to the next uh, the next few properties that are mentioned over here the second one as you can see is the density now obviously aluminium has the minimum density and uh, that's that's the main reason that earns aluminium a lot of points when it comes to selecting a material for any design people are generally inclined towards using aluminium because it reduces weight and when you are looking at something like a brake rotor which is a part of the unsprung mass of the vehicle uh, you generally tend to choose aluminium because you can save some weight over there so that's right uh, aluminium wins some points over there for uh, a good material to be used for a brake for making the brake rotor right now the next very important uh, 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 function that the, the, the brake rotor has to perform is to handle the heat that is generated while braking so it has to have good thermal conductivity which will help in conducting the heat generated at one point to the rest of the brake rotor now if a good thermal conductivity is not there then what happens is that you have a certain amount of heat in one region the other region is cold the heat is not able to flow from the hot region to cold region quickly so this gives rise to thermal stresses and what happens next is that these thermal stresses may lead to either distortion or even cracking so over here as well you can see that grey cast iron has the minimum thermal uh, thermal conductivity of 46 watt per meter kelvin then you have uh, steel which is 51.9 and then aluminum which is the highest uh, 140 right so over here again uh, aluminum has a high thermal conductivity uh, it can prove to be better specific heat capacity now we'll not directly discuss this one uh, it, it's just good enough to know that uh, aluminum has the highest specific heat capacity right so over here also aluminum is going to win some points but then comes the coefficient of thermal expansion now coefficient of thermal con uh, expansion of aluminum is twice that of grey cast iron and steel now this is something which is not very good because you don't want dimensional uh, uh, you know dimensional changes happening on your disc while you are braking even though this, uh, the, 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 the coefficient of thermal uh, expansion is in the range of 10 to the power minus 5 but still over here grey and cast iron and steel are going to defeat aluminum because they are quite less they'll expand their, their tendency to expand is quite less as compared to aluminum the next thing is melting point now here is a huge difference again grey cast iron and steel have very high melting points whereas aluminum has a melting point of 500 degrees centigrade and then the third, the last and the final property that we'll discuss is the overall heat transfer coefficient. This property helps in transferring the heat that is uh, there, the heat is transferring the heat from the rotor to the air, which is the, the method of cooling of the brake rotor. Over here again, aluminum will generally cool faster because the overall heat transfer coefficient is higher compared to grey cast iron and steel. The three, uh, based upon these three materials, we are showing over here the uh, rotors that are available in the market. So we deal in Wilwood brakes and uh, in Wilwood brakes we don't have a grey cast iron rotor uh, which is generally there for the calipers that are used for uh, generally you know preferred by formula student teams or Baha teams. But we have steel rotor uh, 160.0867 which is the parts, uh, part number. And then we have an aluminum aluminum rotor as well, 163411. And uh, there are a lot of rotors, but uh, these are a few examples that I'm that would like that I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> now, when uh, the when you are driving in an endurance event, then uh, your brake rotors are going to reach temperatures of up to 300 degrees centigrade. And if you are an aggressive driver and you have an aggressive car, 
and you're pushing your car to the limit, then you may also end up with higher temperatures at your brake disc. The problem with aluminum rotors is that it has a melting point of around 500 degrees centigrade only. Therefore, when temperatures start approaching close to that, close to 500 degrees centigrade, then aluminum will start becoming soft and it may also start losing its strength. And this is something that we don't need, which we, uh, this is something that we don't want, right? So this is one of the drawbacks of using an aluminum rotor. So obviously if you're not, if you're losing brake at higher temperatures, then aggressive driving may not be possible with aluminum rotors. And um, even Carol Smith, who is the author of Tune to Win and Engineer to Win, and who was also, uh, uh, you know, he used to judge the events of Formula Student. He also used uh, to, you know, used to be against the teams who, against the use of aluminum rotors. And uh, there have been incidents when he, he actually literally, uh, you know, uh, asked the teams not to use uh, aluminum rotors because, you know, uh, the reason that he gave was that you won't be able to drive very fast, if, uh, very aggressively if you are using aluminum rotors. If you still decide to go with aluminum rotors, then you can only use aluminum rotors with polymetric skew and purple compound brake pads. And you can find the details about these compounds on wilwood.com. Having said that, uh, normally it's better to use grey cast iron or a steel rotor uh, rather than using an aluminum rotor because that gives you a lot of range uh, as far as the temperature is concerned. As you can see the melting point of grey cast iron and steel is uh, quite high and so you can push your uh, vehicle uh, uh, to its limit. With And then finally uh, there are a couple of processes that actually are done to en enhance the performance of your brake rotors. First thing is hardening. The hardening is important because uh, you know even though you have a very conductive material uh, thermally conductive material there are chances that you may develop thermal stresses and these thermal stresses uh, you know always gives rise to gives rise to cracks and uh, if you don't want that that those cracks to occur then you must have a material which is hard enough to prevent uh, fracture and to prevent cracks so hardening methods like normalizing and FNC should be carried out. Then you then the second process is coating. Coating of brake disc prevents brake disc from corrosion. Generally, uh, you can go for anodizing. Then ceramic coating on aluminium disc also enhances the performance at high temperatures.